Hello, hola amigos, amigas, bienvenidos, welcome, welcome, welcome to Lima, Perú. Hola a todos and thanks for joining this channel and today's experience from home. This is a, one of my series of tours that I conduct for HeyGo, for all of you HeyGoers who are interested in Peruvian culture and history. I am a full-time tour guide in Lima, Peru. I am an official tour guide here in, con in the country. And uh, I just came from a city tour, an in-person city tour. So sorry if I made you wait a little bit longer. Um, I am always pleased to show you uh, my city and my country in person and also virtually. So um, now I will continue with one of my series dedicated to the museums of Peru. And we're going also to talk about one of the oldest societies of this country, uh, the Mochica culture or Moche culture, and in, part in particular about one of the societies that developed in the north of the country, uh, which were the constructors of amazing pyramids in the north of Peru. So let me say hi to you all. Hola amigos, amigas. Hola Carol. Hola señora. Hello. <laughs> hi JB. Thanks for coming. Thanks so, so much for visiting Lima today. Um, well, as I said before, um, uh, my apologies if you've been waiting for, for too long. I think it was a couple of minutes it took me to connect. I just came from a tour and uh, I, I'm so excited to show you this uh, museum that we are about to learn uh, about uh, from, uh, but with the use of a uh, pre-recorded documentary. So um, in this, um, let's say, series of uh, events, I conduct from home um, and I dedicate to museums. I use uh, pre-recorded documentaries, documentaries from the Peruvian television um, that are about uh, showing uh, local people, Peruvian people about our patrimony, but also anyone interested in learning uh, about Peru's history from, uh, let's say, a, a more local perspective. So um, the channel who produced this um, documentary you're going to see today is Channel 7 National Television, um, which you can see also in cable TV in some parts of the world, but basically uh, where there are larger Peruvian communities like North America, for example, Central America. Uh, and thanks to YouTube, you can access to these uh, documentaries. Uh, Hi. Oh, hello, Tomas. Hi. <laughs> so I'm, by the way, seeing your comments. If you have any question, uh, if you would like to know more about this museum or any other additional, let's say, like uh, comments you have, please use the comment section. I love to read you, um, to, to check on your, um, let's say, uh, particular, uh, let's say, solicitudes in terms of you know, where I can conduct the, uh, the experience. Um, so, well, now we're going to start. Um, also, I will turn now the camera to give proper credit to the um, channel in YouTube that we are going to be um, like using the video from. So, uh, first of all, the name of this documentary, it is in Spanish. The documentaries I use are in Spanish. So, if you want to practice your Spanish, you can come to uh, this channel, TV Peru, right? And especially to all the series uh, that are under the name Museos Puertas Abiertas. Puertas abiertas means open doors, doors open. This is museums, doors open. And uh, the documentary we will be using is Museos Tumbas Reales de Sipan. Uh, the museum that we are going to learn about is located in the north coast of Peru. Uh, Tumbas Reales de Sipan or the Royal Tombs of Sipan is a museum from 2002. 
okay so now we're going to begin with this experience and at the end i will give you further information about this uh, this site i had the pleasure to visit this place this year and uh, also in a, in a in a family tree i uh, trip i did uh because part of my family comes from the north of peru and i was really pleased uh, seeing the beautiful exhibit in person uh, my guiding let's say work is mainly in lima in the capital of peru but we tour guides are trained to um let's say learn about different museums of peru to give proper introductions to different museums uh, and also we tour guides are ambassadors of our country um in a country like peru where people just know about Cusco, about Machu Picchu, about maybe Titicaca Lake, and maybe a little bit of Lima, it is necessary to us, for us tour guides, uh, to let know the world about the other sites that we have in the country. And a good tool is usually these documentaries. Like for example, this one here from Channel 7 National Television. It is called Museos Puertas Abiertas, which you can see also in YouTube. And in this series uh, of, um, let's say, documentaries, you can learn about many museums of the country. And some of them you're going to be surprised uh, about the content in them, because uh, Peru is not just the Incas, number one. Peru is not just a country of wonderful food. We're very proud of that. But Peru is a millenary country with ancient societies uh, that develop in different parts of the country in different periods in a territory which is definitely not the most easiest for anyone, even nowadays, with all the modernity that we have, with all the uh, skills that we handle as modern day people, we are, uh, that we are able to achieve in the middle of the desert life, like for example, with the drop technique of irrigation uh, that in nowadays, for example, is coming to Peru from Israel. But thousands of years ago, ancient societies of Peru were able to create life, create oasis of life in the desert, right? So uh, first of all, the museum uh, is, um, is, is one of the most important archaeological national museums we have in Peru. We have wonderful private museums, but national museums of this value, we have very few. Dr. Walter Alba is the director of the uh, the work uh, um, that took place in a archaeological site called nowadays uh, the uh, the Royal Tombs of Lord of Sipan, and uh, he was the leader of a tomb of several archaeologists that in the year 1987 discovered by accident, in a way, uh, the tombs that conform the museum that you are about to see in this moment. Uh, so all of the different pieces that you're going to see in this museum, we're talking about thousands of pieces, uh, like over 2,000 beautiful pieces that are in the museum, uh, are uh, originally from the tomb of the Lord of Japan, which was the one discovered by Dr. Walter Alba in 1987. So uh, first of all, in this section of the uh, documentary, you can see a uh, possible recreation, 3D recreation of the archeological site, uh, the way it used to be around the year 250 of our era. So we're talking about uh, let's say 200 years uh, after Christ, approximately. Uh, so the sites 
that, um, let's say, the temples that existed in the coast of Peru before the coming of the conquistadors were made in mud bricks and they were beautifully painted with lots of colors. Most of the times, red and yellow color were the colors used uh, besides designs and, and all the colors additionally. But those colors were associated, the red with the sun, the yellow with the moon. So always the idea of the two worlds to Together, the two gods, the, the, the two opposites that complement each other to create life. Okay, so this first part, you will see some uh, images of how probably those temples look like. And the museum that you are seeing here, that's the Museum uh, Tumbas Reales or Royal Tomb of Sipan, it is inspired in these uh, pyramids. Uh, this is over like a, like a, let's say, a perfect pyramid shape uh, uh, that is inspired in the pyramids uh, of this time. But keep in mind that those pyramids were flat on the top, okay? So they were not pointy on the top. Why those pyramids were flat on the top? It is because those pyramids were not just simply mausoleums, they were places of ceremonies. And the ceremonies took place on the top of the pyramids. So uh, these pyramids were sort of like stages uh, uh, that were also um, uh, places uh, used for ceremonies, public ceremonies. Uh, so during this uh, let's say documentary, you're going to see, besides the explanations uh, always conducted by Walter Alba, that it still is in charge of the museum um, since the year of the creation of the museum, 2002, you're going to see also a uh, lot of beautiful pieces that are all of them original that were taken from the tomb of the Lord of uh, Sipan. So little by little, we're going to understand who was the Lord of Sipan. And also uh, I will uh, give you at the end some images of a, a documentary made by uh, the, the History Channel uh, about how was probably the, the looks of the uh, Lord of Sipan and how the people of that time uh, looked like. So it's, this is really interesting. And I hope this will start conversations where you are and also uh, interest in reading more about this um, interesting story. So the place where the museum is located, oh, which is in Lambayeque in the north of the country, it is a zone that is inhabited, of course, by there are many families around the museum. Once you get there, you arrive, there is a place for tour buses and, and, and visitors who are coming with their own transportation. And then after you get through a ramp inspired in the ancient, uh, let's say, temples from the north of Peru, uh, all the, the idea of the museum is to look the most uh, alike in terms of how the temples used to be like. And then you start with this section. Um, so after you go up the ramp, by the way, this is a documentary. And, and of course, the way how the images come fast, no, is, is the way how the documentary has been designed to be. That's the style of this documentary. Um, but I will be making stops in, in moments I think are important for you to understand the whole circuit inside. Remember that we are not in the museum. We are in my house. And uh, I'm trying to tell you the story of the museum and the story of, of the collection no? and how it was built. Um, so when you get into the museum, there is a section where a video is presented to you in, in which you understand how um, the Lord of Sipan, who was the person buried in the tomb that Mr. Uh, Walter Alba discovered in the 80s, how the Lord of Sipan probably looked like when he was alive, how he dressed, and also the people who participated on this documentary at the entrance of the museum were all, are all local. Oh, eh, and this is because eh, although we are mestizo, we are mixed blood, in Peru, there is still a lot of, a lot of indigenous blood among us. And there are zones where there was less 
mixing of bloods with the Spanish or, or the Africans or the Italians, right? Um, so something very curious about this museum as well is the fact that all the pottery is local from one finding, from one temple. Also, a, every element that you will see here, like the uh, iconography and designs and pottery is right from, from this place, right? Uh, and all of this is from the same period. Uh, it's not mixed with other uh, cultures, with other sites. Uh, and also, uh, it is in really good condition. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, the quality of the pottery is fantastic. And these pottery, there were thousands of pottery discovered in the tomb where the Lord of Sipan was uh, founded. Um, the tombs of men as powerful as this king, for example, that ruled this, this uh, let's say, uh, this realm uh, back then, the Lord of Sipan, we don't know his true name, we call him Lord of Sipan. Um, these potteries, they all had information about the status of this person. Oh, we have, for example, the representation of the of a skull, no, and also behind Mr. Walter Alba, we have this beautiful, like a representation of a deity with eyes that are elongated and that have sort of like the eyes of a bird. Oh, so uh, the ancient societies of Peru uh, worship deities or gods which look like either birds or sea animals. Mm. Uh, the potteries were uh, a way also to send information or the, the images in them to the afterlife. Oh. Um, potteries had lots of iconography in them. Uh, the makers of the potteries were considered really important people. The, uh, the Three Hispanic societies, and in particular, this society of the north of Peru that I said uh, is called the Mochica culture. The Mochica culture, by the way, uh, appeared around the beginnings of Christian era, 2000 years ago, until the year 700 of our era. So these were completely like stratified societies. Uh, so if you were, for example, born in the, in the high ruling society, you will not be able to become a low, low part of the society, no, uh, bottom society and vice versa, right? So uh, the, there were workers that their work was more valued. Uh, for example, potters uh, and goldsmiths, symbols, symbols, myths. So you can see here a recreation uh, of the tomb of the Lord of Sipan as it was discovered by Walter Alva. So Mr. Walter Alva uh, um, was very lucky to find this tomb intact because for long uh, it always was the case of looters arrive first to the tombs and when looters find this what do you think they do with all of this they can sell it immediately in the black market amigos this is gold of in some cases uh 22 carats it can be sometimes up to 24 carats gold um, so this is, for example, a, a, a recreation within the museum of the royal tombs of Sipan, that one I am mentioning, uh, we are talking about. Um, this is a recreation of the depth of the tomb, how deep it was when Walter Alba studied, found it, uh, and also the exact measures of the tomb. So in a moment, I will put play. No? I think you're going to see a little bit more of the tomb. But notice that the tomb was made like all in mud bricks because the temple was all a mud bricks temple. And uh, this tomb consists uh, in a uh, burial uh, intact, once again, I mentioned, of a lord of great importance, a king, a leader of great importance, uh, which you can see here a, a replica of how we believe this person looked like when he was alive uh, and also dressed up with the same type of ornaments he was buried with. But by the way, we are not sure these people use uh, when they were alive those ornaments because probably some of them were made especially for their dead 
uh, chamber for the afterlife. Um, but maybe they use something very similar when they were alive. Also, notice. Sorry. <laughs> Someone, I think, called me, so that's why um, I was interrupted. Sorry, sorry. Um, so I was saying that we have these uh, elements uh, that look like, can you see the waves from the ocean? Also, uh, remember the coastal societies of Peru were deeply inspired in the nature around them. Uh, they uh, represented in their ornaments the waves of the sea. They represented uh, the looks of the birds, uh, the, the big earrings, the nose rings. Everything had to, the, um, uh, let's say, that dehumanize the looks to make them look more divine right so uh, when you go to this museum you can see recreations of uh, these people how they we believe they used to look like and also you can see in some sections some skulls for example like the skull of and the, and the body the mummy of the lord of sipan uh, respectfully taken care of in a special zone because we are very respectful with our deaths, our ancestors, uh, and especially of this kind of leaders, because they were considered to be gods. Although we are Catholic nowadays, we are still, um, in a way, also worshippers of the ancestors. Uh, so you can see that the way how the Lord of Sipan was discovered was uh, having over the, uh, the, the, the eyes this like uh let's say little uh, elements like there were eyes like golden eyes and also the same on the mouth like covering the entrance into the the mouth and also the eyes also no? fake uh let's say sort of like lips and also eyes and uh, this is the the real uh lord of sipan right so uh, the tomb of course, had many layers. We're going to talk about the layers the tomb had. And um, the most important character in the tomb was this man. He was surrounded by women, by, by their, his wives. Or he had like four women around him. All oh, vain, thanks for coming. <laughs> so uh, he was surrounded with women. Uh, he had animals around. He had uh, also uh, guardians. Uh, around one of them had his feet chopped off something like uh, Achilles believed like it was like for the this uh, soldier to never run away from there right so uh, the idea was that these soldiers will be there forever with him he's a standard no his his priest also were around his tomb uh, I will explain in detail everything but when the team, yes, Anthony, uh, when the team of Walter Alba was able to reach out the bottom of the whole tomb and uh, was able to find at last the coffin where Lord of Sipan was, he was able to find Lord of Sipan with a lot of beautiful gold and ornaments. And uh, at the end, uh, the reason of the museum was not just to protect the golden pieces and the pottery pieces discovered in the tomb in one same place also to make sure that the lord of sipan will not be like sended out of his land because we believe the spirit of this person should stay in his home so that's why here we have the body the bones of the actual lord of sipan Oh, you can see also the, the coverage of the mouth in gold, the eye coverage also in gold, sorry. And the bones are clearly, and well, this is this is the way how uh, it, the, the body of the, part, partially mummified body of the Lord of Sipan is. Uh, um, so the museum has to, there inside, by the way, in the box is the Lord. So people can visit the Lord, can pay their respects to the Lord, and also see all of the pieces all protected, no? So this is the way how we believe the, this man look like. He must have been around his 40s, probably. Um, so people in Peru, in that 
context, in that time, in that era, in that location, didn't live for too long, probably because of the desert life, or probably because of, let's say, like several different climatic conditions that affected uh, the, his life. And you can see also no, that from the looks, the way how he has been represented, no, he looks like a like a fierce person, no, he was an almighty leader, right? And we know that he used nose rings, for example, or to in that way not show the smile never. So he was a person with no fear, no emotions, no, completely non-human, right? Uh, there is also another tomb over there, oh, the one we just saw, uh, which is the tomb of another leader, which was discovered in that site. So the temples used to have several tombs, not just one. There were several, several tombs. And those tombs were um, all located in, in very special uh, like um, context, no? of course, because they were considered sacred people, so they couldn't go to be buried anywhere. Luther's unfortunately have been able to reach out most of the tombs. And here's a representation of how Luther's work, unfortunately, at nighttime, you know, in, in temples that are far, far, far away from the city center area, uh, they are able to dig in, to, to erupt, to, to open, to make holes, and easily to excavate uh, and take away our patrimony. Um, but of course, most Peruvians are afraid of the spirits of these of these tombs, the spirits of these temples. Uh, even the looters are afraid. We call them, by the way, waqueros. No, waca is temple. Waquero is the one who goes to the temples and take the things from the temple. So uh, there are payments to Pachamama made, payments to the spirits made before uh, we go any further into excavations. Even archaeologists do that. Uh, um, so here we have a part of the museum has a really interesting recreation of, of how the Lord of Sipan and his committee, his royal committee was and looked like. And you know something very cool? Uh, Mr. A Walter Alba, when he created well uh, the museum or he well, curated the, the, let's say, the ideas for the museum, he decided uh, to have a representation of the Lord of Sipan. And the artist who made the representation asked neighbors of the vicinity of the community to participate and to be turned into models for the people who were represented here. No? So this is uh, uh, supposed to be, well, the, the whole like, group that, that accompanied the Lord of Sipan in life. Many of them went to the afterlife um, because, of course, uh, as loyal servants, they will not imagine their existence in this world without their Lord. Um, we know that some of these people were killed when the Lord of Sipan died, and that probably was um, because, of course, um, there was no other job they would do here in this life uh, when their, their Lord was not here, so they had to continue with him in the next world. Uh, and we know that these people were given probably some type of hallucinogenic plants before they were killed, right? Um, so this uh, image that you see here, for example, this is a, a picture of the mud bricks that conform the pyramid. In the coast of Peru, we have um, temples, pre-Hispanic temples made entirely in mud bricks. A curiosity in here, this is, by the way, one of the first stages at the entrance of the museum, is that they show you these bricks that are marked, right, but with different shapes, with different forms. Some of them with circles, some of them with crosses, some of them with lines. So now the theory uh, that, um, that the archaeologists handle around these strange marks in the mud bricks is that uh, the mud bricks were made by different groups, different family groups. Um, and according to the family group, they were marked differently. So uh, it was a way to recognize, for example, um, which families have tributed uh, to the construction of the 
pyramid, for example, no? Uh, and with how many bricks, no? So this was signs or symbols assigned to different families, right? Uh, so all of these uh, pieces that you see over here, which are original, as you know already, uh, were pieces that were discovered in the tomb uh, of the Lord. And look also in this section, the central cabinet or the central coffin is where the Lord of Sipan was discovered with lots of golden pieces, golden masks, crowns, and also uh, elements that were made from copper. That's why it looks a little bit greenish here. Uh, and also on the sides, four coffins, uh, that contain uh, women uh, that were probably wives uh, to the Lord of Sipan. Uh, uh, also, uh, there was there was deposited a llama, a, a dog, a Peruvian hairless dog, probably the dog of the Lord of Sipan, uh, when there with him, uh, the soldiers, as I said before. And this was a very, very deep chamber, which at some point reached down like three meters. So it was very, very deep. Uh, and also it must have been like what an amazing like a, a moment of adrenaline right uh, being able to be there with Walter Alva and having the chance of seeing that first moment when this um, tomb was open and we can maybe make some parallels with uh, Egyptian tombs of pharaohs uh, that were open for the first time and the tombs of the lords of the coast of Peru that were discovered also in the 1980s, 70s, a little bit later, of course, than in the case of the big and important ones in Egypt. Uh, but we can make some parallels in, in, in the terms of saying that uh, these fantastic ancient societies were able to uh, build in the desert. Cairo is the biggest city in the world built on a desert. Lima is the second biggest city in the world built on a desert. The characteristics of the coast of Peru are quite alike to the ones of, uh, let's say, the, the ones in Egypt, no? where that amazing society developed. Um, so as I said before, in 2002, this museum was inaugurated and also with the best technology of those days, including laboratories, for example, for restoration of pieces, not just from the complex of Sipan, also from other nearby complex in the north coast of Peru. Uh, this was one of the dreams of Walter Alba uh, because um, unfortunately there is not really much, still nowadays, much attention to what happens in the north of Peru in terms of archaeology, although it's a very rich land, uh, a promised land for archaeologists. Uh, also, there is a section where you can buy souvenirs uh, and, and, and lots of really uh, nice things that are made locally. Um, so this uh, little, this, these images you see here are taken from the documentary of um, this, uh, the History Channel, uh, which we're going to see briefly at the end. Um, so I would like to also make a little stop over here to show you about the elements that are usually most seen in the on the clothing of these ancient lords or leaders. You will see lots of gold and silver, right? Like uh, beautiful headdresses in, in gold, like sort of like uh, like crowns, not exactly like crowns, but usually like discs that are sort of like a circular, some of them probably representing the, the moon or the sun. It is really hard to know uh, in detail because um, we don't have any inscriptions from that time, any written system from that time. Yes, Anthony, <laughs> a little bit creepy <laughs> animatronics, but really cool indeed because you can, you can really like, history comes alive, right, with them. Gold and silver, by the way, amigos, amigas, um, gold and silver had no monetary value in the pre-Hispanic times. Gold and silver had a sublime value, which was connected with the worshiping of the gods. It was believed that the gold was the sweat of the sun in earth and silver, 
the tears of the moon in earth. So just to give you an idea how important these metals were, they were not for the common use of people to, now, well, now everyone that has maybe some money can, you know, buy a, a ring and put it on and, and then immediately you escalate socially, right? But back then that was not possible because uh, escalating socially implied also your origin, your procedence, you know, uh, that you were the, the children of the gods or not. And not everybody was a child of God. Some of the masks you see here, for example, which were discovered in, in the tombs represent deities and they are also made not just from gold, also from uh, semi, semi or demi precious stones, such as turquoise, lapis lazuli, for example, uh, emeralds. Uh, so this means that these people were able to trade with societies that were distant because lapis lazuli comes from Chile, uh, emeralds come from Ecuador, Colombia. Oh, so it, it means that these people had an outreach that was fascinating. Also, oh, we are now going to jump briefly to the documentary I wanted to also share about, uh, it was this one here. Yes, and let's see also, uh-huh. So we are going, oh, just give me a second. Just give me a second. So, um, so first of all, the, the, uh, sorry, the Nat Geo channel, uh, uh, Nat Geo is the, the one that is owner of this documentary, um, also um, compiled some of the images related with the findings that were made in recent years in, uh, in that site, in the site of, um, let's say, uh, Señor de Sipan or Lord of Sipan. And here you can see also Nagio made a really good effort in paying, in contracting Peruvian actors to take part of a series of scenes for his documentary, which I highly recommend you to look in the internet in English, uh, about, well, the life during the time of the Lord of Sipan. Um, in which uh, they not just also uh, use local artists, also recreated the whole like uh, scenes uh, of how these constructions look like inside. Um, we have, for example, moments in which we have uh, the the recreation of uh, how these ceremonies for Pachamama or Mother Earth were made, uh, the painting of the dead in this case, this is the preparation of the Lord of Sipan uh, for his burial, for his tomb, in which he is painted with cinnabar, uh, cinabrio in Spanish, cinnabar. Uh, so this is a very toxic, by the way, um, uh, let's say uh, chemical, red color, uh, which was used to protect the skin uh, of the dead and also give it a, a nice beautiful red color. Uh, to protect from, uh, let's say, bugs uh, that will damage uh, the, the skin because it's extremely poisonous. So there's no creature that consumes or can uh, consume uh, this, uh, this powder, right? So um, then we're going to pass a little bit ahead. Uh, there is another section I would like to, to share with you, right, which is over here. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the scenes are all about all uh, this, uh, like the tomb and how he was prepared and how the, uh, for example, uh, there the was placed, it was placed over the face of this leader, uh, the masks, uh, the pigment, the gold, the silver. So the idea is give us a, a interpretation of how the moments before the burial happened, because what we have is the burial, not really much uh, besides the burial. Uh, also, the representation of some older important leaders who rule with him at the same time with the Lord, right? Uh, that uh, also were priests and priestesses, which are represented in potteries. Also, they are being, in a way, animated also, right? Um, and we will continue a little bit ahead also. Uh, so with this part, which is 
also the moment when they are covering uh, the tomb with all of the different paraphernalia and the different uh, decorations. So, so this is just to give you an idea about how, a, um, let's say, this, this place uh, uh, has been also um, the, the museum of Sipan has been uh, important for not just generating uh, tourism also in that region, giving the opportunity of people from that community to make a living from tourism, archaeologists the opportunity to understand the past, we Peruvians understand better uh, our history, and the world also uh, understanding better who Peruvians are. So Museum Tumbas Reales, here I have some information if you wish to know a little bit more about this site. Museum Tumas Reales is located in Lambayeque in the north uh, part of Peru, in the north coast of Peru. Uh, to go to Lambayeque, you cannot do it by car from Lima. If you plan to come to Lima, for example, and you want to go to the north of Peru, you have to take a plane, right? Um, so you will be landing quite close to the vicinity, to the area where uh, you know, this museum is after one hour of flight. But if not, if you do it by bus, it will take you one full day to go in that uh, direction of Peru. This is a wonderful museum. It is really, really amazing. And um, you can also, uh, let me just share with you, uh, this is the information of the museum. Uh, if you want to see it also in English, it is open pretty much every day of the week with the only exception of Mondays because Mondays usually museums close. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that this information help you to understand a little bit more the north of Peru, uh, the, the beauty of this museum. And if you have also the chance to uh, go to the north of Peru, please don't miss this site, which is really, really fantastic. Let me turn the camera. I would like to uh, say hello and or uh, let's say to the people who have just joined. By the way, my name is Vanessa Vasquez. I am your Lima City Tour Guide. I am sharing here uh, with you all my information, all my information uh, about uh, my work in Lima, my local business, Adventurous Travel. Um, you can also jump to my social media anytime. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. We have a YouTube channel where all my uh, events that I have conducted here for Hago, uh, I record them and I put them there for you to see later. Uh, if you would like to support this event, you can do it with a tip, for example. There is, I will activate a button. Uh, you know probably already that these are free events that are just supported with your tips, with your generosity. And also the tips don't go directly to us. They are split with Hago, so Hago also benefits benefits from the tips. Uh, there is also a new program called the sponsorship program that is helping us tour guides to continue like creating content. And to our sponsors, we tour guides give different, let's say little presents. Uh, some guys do private tours for the sponsors. Some guys send postcards. In my case, I am writing a book that I am very, very happy to share with you all. My book is all about Lima. I am doing focusing now my work in Lima. It is a guidebook about Lima. Uh, it will be sort of like a, a guide about uh, the of the beaten path destinations in Lima and also to explain you all uh, how Lima is the way it is. Uh, and also I am doing parallel a uh, cookbook. So I do up updates on my books once a month. So the first update is going to come this November the 1st. So this is given uh, to all my um, sponsors as a present in return for your support. And the sponsorship program is like, uh, there's a fee of $10 per month and it's also shared with Hago. So, well, this really is, is uh, very helpful and I really have some wonderful sponsors that are helping me. So thanks a lot for that to my 
friends that are uh, trusting in, in my in my um in my work here in lima and uh, well if you wish to also support me on the sponsorship program you can do it easily you can go to the channel uh my channel is vanessa lima city guide and there you're going to see a sponsorship so uh, there you can click and you will get some information so Susanne is commenting, it was, I was there in 2005. Ah, yes, Susanne, I'm so happy you weren't there. Uh, I'm, I'm really thrilled to, to know that you've been already there. And it was fantastic, I'm sure. Been any further discoveries since then? Well, not in the site of Sipan, so far I learned. I, I went this year. Um, I was not able to go to the archaeological site because I had a really short uh, time there to do some tours, like historic tours. But um, the people in the museum mentioned that um, they are, there were some like recent, like uh, there was a reactivation of some works in the archaeology. Um, but the pandemic also had a stop unfortunately delay a lot of the works that have been done because we were working consistently in promoting more the north of Peru um, as much as you know Cusco or Lima but the pandemic stopped everything so we have to go again sorry I missed it too oh no John doctors oh, I'm so sorry that you missed it but no worries I'm going to be uh, uploading the video in my channel John Remember that in, in YouTube, I have a channel. It is called Adventuros Travel Guide. So you can later go there and you can give a look to the documentary uh, that I play here today. So no worries, John. Thanks for coming. So thanks a lot, my friends. Gracias, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gracias, Adrian, amiga. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your support, for your friendship for being there and also for your tip support is really, really valuable. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you are joining on board on the sponsorship program, uh, that is fantastic. Uh, thanks a lot in advance. And I will be sending you also uh, my, my book uh, very soon. Um, when I'm going to be doing the upload, uh, the last upload in November the 1st. Susan, gracias. Mwah, thank you. John, let me once again send you my uh, card. That's like a business card. And there you can see my uh, YouTube. Can you see that, John? There is my YouTube. Uh, uh, amigos, by the way, there you have my Instagram, my YouTube, my Facebook, everything. See? So please follow me there and hope to see you very soon. Take care. Lots of love from Lima, Peru. And see you soon. I'll be cooking for you all next week and doing all the tours also from home. So lots of love from Lima, Peru. Take care, my, my friends. And well, until the next time. Bye-bye. Gracias. Thanks. Thanks for your tip support, Susan. Gracias, amigos. Bye-bye.